Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, five New Zealand Pinot Noirs, three different regions, two different vintages, one glass, one spittoon, one willing taster in the form of me. Uh, let's see how we get on. First one I've got just says Nelson on the front. Uh, Nelson Pinot Noir, so it's Marks and Spencer's uh, own label, uh, made by uh, Seyfried, the Seyfried family, who are some of the pioneers of Nelson. Uh, they were there early, maybe not at the peak of, um, uh, of Nelson production now, but uh, certainly up there with the best of them. They do this in a smaller bottle, which is called a Half Nelson. I made that up. Um, OK, let's just try it and shut up. Hmm, bit on the pale and is it interesting side. And I'm not talking about the colour here. Pinot Noir um, is, is, a, is not a deep coloured grape. There are some grapes that, like Syrah and Cabernet Sauvignon that make dark, dense, inky wine. Pinot is not like that. Um, but um, here, by pale, I mean that, that there's something almost uh, slightly scrawny and missing in the wine. Um, I stick my nose in there and uh, there's this slightly stewed edge as if uh, what's happened is they've been waiting for the flavours to fully ripen and to fully develop and in the process some of the grapes have gone ever so slightly raisiny uh, but uh, in terms of the flavours maybe the flavours haven't developed quite as well as they should have done so it smells like there's going to be um, an okay amount of fruit but it's not going to um, it's not going to really set your knees trembling Pinot Noir should set your knees trembling and this one feels just a little bit too uh, uh, scrawny. I may be wrong, let's have a see. There's a little bit of greenness, a little bit of uh, uh, slightly hard tannin, this stewed berry side. It's okay. I mean, um, perfectly pleasant, but the finish I'm left with has got that little touch of bitterness, that little touch of greenness that uh, says to me that um, uh, the fruit wasn't quite as uh, mature in and uh, not in uh, uh, yeah, not in sugar sense of the word, but yeah, it, 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 it needed to for its flavours to develop a little bit more. In terms of alcohol, yeah, it's 14%, uh, and uh, they should, if, if they've not got their flavours right at that, uh, uh, when, when, it, when it's achieved that alcohol, almost says to me that um, maybe there's something wrong with the viticulture, or maybe there's something wrong with where they've, they've planted their vines, but uh, not quite there for me. Let's see what they, the next one, uh, which is also from Nelson, uh, is, uh, I do similar comments. This is Waimea, uh, Waimea Pinot Noir, and 2010 vintage, uh, is it? Yeah, 2010, another one, 14% alcohol. Well, you probably can't see from here, but there's similar depth of colour. Uh, but here, uh, there, there's a more brightness uh, to to the, the actual appearance of the wine. Uh, the first one maybe had a little touch of brownness to it. Here, it looks more on the, the it looks more vibrant, and it smells more vibrant too. Uh, more raspberries, more cherries, uh, fresher fruit. It's not got that stewed character, um, and it doesn't feel like it's going to be a huge wine, um, it, despite the 14% alcohol. But it feels like um, uh, that things actually ripened more correctly here. And certainly the fruit flavours are have got more of a joyful sweetness about them. Sweetness may be almost like pushing it that little bit too far, because um, uh, uh, partly to do with that 14% alcohol, there's this ever so slight confection um, character about it. Do you remember those little tins of sweets that you used to get? What were they called? Smith Kendon or something like that? And uh, there, were the, 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 there were these little raspberry ones that had a dusting of icing sugar and then a surface. And there was a boiled sweet, but before you actually, when you bit into them, before you actually hit the hard bit, there was a microscopic layer of, um, of uh, a soft sugar. And that flavour that you're getting there, that little dusting of icing sugar mixed with the raspberry pastel, there's a little bit of that. Um, I like it. I certainly prefer it to uh, uh, to the the, the Seyfried one. Uh, but I I would almost want instead of uh, uh, getting its richness from uh, a bit of alcohol uh, or uh, me I don't know whether there's a touch of residual sweetness there as well. Um, in, instead of getting it from that, I'd like it to be from fruit concentration and uh, can't really say that I get much of a sense of place. It looks good, tastes. Tastes okay, and I certainly wouldn't uh, object to a second, probably even a third glass of it, but um, uh, doesn't really, again, doesn't really have my knees knocking. So I prefer it to uh, the first one, certainly, but um, let's see whether we get some more excitement uh, down in central Otago. So Nelson is the top end of uh, the uh, South Island in New Zealand. Central Otago is way, way, way down further south in the South Island. I think it's one of the world's most southerly fine wine region. I don't... In fact, it might be the world's most southerly wine region. I can't think of anywhere uh, anyone growing grapes further south. There probably is some Nusser somewhere. 
Um, but uh, interesting thing about these two, uh, they're, one's a Tesco one, one's a, a Sainsbury's one, both under their one, Tesco finest, Sainsbury's taste the difference, uh, and they're both made by the Sacred Hill Winery, uh, which is actually based in Hawke's Bay, so I don't know whether they've got a, a facility down there where they make the wines and uh, and uh, bottle them up in Hawke's Bay, or how they do it, but um, let's see how much of a difference is between these two. So the Tesco one first, Central Otago Pinot Noir 2010. Well, two things immediately. Uh, first of all, colour. Um, the first two, uh, yes, I was saying about Pinot, I don't judge Pinot by colour, but this is a denser, deeper colour. It's still not Syrah or, um, or Cabernet Sauvignon, but there's more of a, a, a vibrant, uh, ruddy colour about this. It feels like it's, uh, it's actually, it's not, it's not pale and interesting, or pale and not very interesting. Uh, it, it, it's, it's been a few more places. Secondly, when you come to smell it, it smells like there's a, a more earthy, profound uh, character coming through here. So a sense of the soil, uh, yes there's the grape variety, but it feels like everything here ripened properly. It doesn't feel like there were, there, that people were actually waiting on for those last few bits of um, uh, vestiges of uh, flavour to get developed. Uh, it, it feels like it's round, it's going to be, uh, not rich is the wrong word, but fully developed. It smells good. Yet more flesh, more uh, fruit, more tannin. Um, just feels like a more grown-up wine, and um, I, I like its juiciness. I like its. Um, I like. I like its. It's. It's actually not, not a, a, an easy drinking wine in the way that maybe the wine meal was. Uh, there is tannin there. You don't want to drink that just by itself. Whereas the the previous one, it would have been quite nice by itself, even with a bit of a chill. Um, but here, you think you want you want something like roast duck, uh, something to uh, uh, the, so that the the, uh, the tannins can bite on the fat and they can uh, uh, they can have synergy, I think, rather than tension. Um, and um, but also, what's good about it is there's this um, uh, the finish you're left with. It's all to do with fruit and um, and terroir rather than sweetness and uh, alcohol. Uh, so I like its length, I like it now, I've got a feeling that uh, in a year or two, maybe even a bit longer, uh, it will be even better and uh, some of those slightly truffly, mushroomy um, characters that are coming through will be even more to the fore. For the moment, enjoy it for its bold berry and plum and that bit of black cherry as well and uh, tasty wine, I like this. Now one thing I've just noticed, um, this one on the front says um, Jenny Dobson winemaker, even though it says Sacred Hill, this one says on the back Tony Bish. Uh, winemaker. So I don't know whether they're. Um, I don't know whether they're they're, they're just. Uh, they're, 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 I know they're not alter egos. I've met both of them. They are different people. But uh, or whether he's just that uh, Tony's Tony's like the chief winemaker, I think. And uh, 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 Jenny has worked in quite a few places around uh, uh, around New Zealand, and uh, I think also in um, in Bordeaux as well. She's, she's she's been there. But anyway, let's see what the same which taste the difference one is like. Um, so this one is called Penguin Sounds. Uh, Pinot Noir, Central Otago, single vineyard. Give it a whirl. Similar colour, um, similar intensity of fruit. Maybe, um, maybe not as fragrant. Uh, maybe not as lifted as the uh, uh, as the Tesco one. Here, it feels like the sl that yes, there's that same uh, bold berry and plum. But um, it, it doesn't feel like it's going to have quite the uh, um, the finesse. Uh, I may be wrong, and it may just be that it needs a bit of time to blossom. But um, first impression. So let's give it a whirl and see whether the second impression bears that out. Yeah, there's a softer, sweeter character there, and it's got some of that. I was talking about the stewed character um, on the uh, on the side fridge. Certainly not as uh, uh, like it was there. Uh, more, more intensity, uh, more integrity here, I would say. Uh, but. Uh, yes, it doesn't have that freshness and life, and doesn't have the pounce of the uh, uh, of the Tesco version. Uh, I like I like it, and I think without the Tesco one, I'd be uh, probably crowing about it. But uh, I don't know whether it's two different winemakers let loose on the same batch of fruit, or uh, or, or whether it's just the uh, some barrels and Tesco got to the best ones first. But the Tesco one for me is uh, quite a way better than the Sainsbury's. Hey. Uh, let's see how we get on with the sole example from uh, the South I uh, sorry the North Island. Uh, we're at the southern tip of the North Island with Alana Estate um, Pinot Noir from Martinborough. Different vintage, different region, different winery, um, and um, well, two things. Well, 
more than two things I noticed. Um, first of all, it feels like a, a slightly more mellow style than the two Otagos, and certainly more mellow than the uh, uh, than the, the, the Tesco version. Um, but also, in terms of fruit flavours, uh, I don't know whether this is to do with the um, the clones of Pinot Noir that they've planted, because uh, uh, it's not. It, it would be great if there was just Pinot Noir, but no, there's Pinot Noir Type A, Pinot Noir Type B, Pinot Noir Type C, and um, Martinborough was probably the first area in New Zealand that got Pinot Noir right. Um, uh, Central Otago followed maybe five, ten years later, uh, but because it did follow later, it was able to plant the best quality clonal material. Here there's something that's maybe not as fresh and sappy and uh, uh, vibrant in terms of its fruit character as, uh, as, as in the two Otago wines, um, but um, there's also uh, Having said that, there is more of a gamey, animal, meaty side. So um, it, it would be great if you could get the fruitiness of the uh, certainly the Tesco one with the gamey animal side of that. But um, how long has uh, New Zealand been making Pinot Noir properly? Twenty-five years, less. Hey, give it a whirl. So there's that rounded, spicy softness, um, and um, as with the the wine mere, I feel a bit of the warmth there. Um, and 14.5% uh, alcohol, so uh, that's probably why, whereas the two Otago ones were 13.5%. Um, I, I, uh, some people will love that warm, some people will, will I think, I, I prefer that, I prefer it. It's almost got more of a rony Pinot feel than the previous ones, which were more Burgundian Pinot feel. Um, if I miss something, it's, it is that, uh, uh, that juicy, elegant, bright fruit that was, in, uh, was, that was, that was certainly in the Tesco one. Um, here it feels uh, good, uh, and again, as I said uh, with, the, with the Sainsbury's one, in, uh, in other company I think they sort of shone. At the moment I find it a bit, um, stolid's the wrong word, but I find it, um, I find it juicy, full-bodied, but maybe lacks, lacks a few grace notes. Um, it's, it can do the bass line, but um, a little, little, it needs a bit more work on the melody line. Um, so, um, bullet Tesco for um, doing that one. I, I think that, that that's a terrific wine, and uh, that's probably the one that I will be... Actually, am I having duck tonight? No, I'm not having duck tonight. Maybe I'll stick the uh, screw cap back in, stick it in the fridge, and uh, go out and buy some duck and have it tomorrow night. But, in the meantime, I... I quite enjoyed these, but um, some of them more than others. See you soon.